human being should have a belief. This is something built within you, you cannot get rid of it. So the most important thing in this life is the Iman. Allah has promised those who believe, Allah is going to make them successors on earth. But there is a condition. If you don't make shirk, so this is the importance of the Iman. The Iman is the most important element. So now, because of the dhikr, because of the istighfar, because of reading the Quran, you feel, mashallah, the Iman is shooting up, is rising. Why? Because now, one element of the Iman is increasing. So the problem will increase. Are you, is this clear? Now, take the second conviction. Is it fixed? The aqidah. Is it fixed or variable? It is fixed and variable. How? It is fixed in the sense that this, you believe in the angels, so you will not one day you believe in the angels, one day you believe in the angels, the other day you say, no, I don't believe in the angels, right? So it is fixed. But it is variable that the more evidence you learn about the deed, the stronger the, the conviction. So it is variable from that perspective. The more knowledge you get, the stronger that not becomes. Are you following me? For instance, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhiyil mawta. Oh Allah, show me how you give life to thee. Dead. Allah said, Awalam tu'min? Haven't you believed? So Ibrahim said, alayhi salam, the father of all the prophets, Rabbi Arini, oh my Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. Okay? Allah said, haven't you believed, O oh Ibrahim? He said, yes, I believe. But I want more surety, more certainty, more. There is a belief, but he wants more. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الطَّيْرِ Take, O oh Ibrahim, four birds, four pigeons, and cut them. You cut the pigeons. And then distribute the flesh, the meat of the pigeons, the doves, on the mountains around you. Subhanallah. Listen, try to imagine this. The pigeons are cut into different parts. Some narrations says, and he kept the heads of the pigeons in his hands, the heads. And he distributed the meat on the mountains around him. Then Allah told him, Call them. Call the pigeons and they will come fluttering their wings. Now, after this, when he saw the pigeons came into life, do you think the iman before, the same as the iman after? It will be the peak. The peak. So even the iman itself, the conviction, can also increase. Can also what? Increase. That's why the Iman of the Alim, the scholar, is not like the Iman of the layman. For instance, we believe that there is torture and punishment in the grave. The layman, he doesn't know the details, what is going to happen to him exactly. But the Alim, the scholar, knows. So the Iman will not be the same. And embryologist, he sees how the child is formed from when it is just a drop of semen and through the process of the fertilization and then when the limbs start to form and he is tracing all these stages of the formation of the embryo. And he's a Muslim. 
Is this doctor Muslim? Muslim doctor. His iman will be just like the layman who did not see it with his own eyes? No. So this Muslim doctor, when he reads the Quran and the ayat about embryology, and he knows exactly, his iman will be stronger than the iman of any layman or any ordinary Muslim. Are you following, brothers and sisters? Okay, fine. Now, so now we know that action, utterances can increase, right? Conviction also can increase. Let me give you another example. In schools, if you know how to solve mathematical problem with only one method, and another student, he knows how to solve it with two methods, another one with three or four methods, getting, arriving at the same answer. So if I know how to solve this problem by four methods, is there a chance that I might forget all the four methods or the five methods? It's very less, right? But if I know only one method, just ask me after a few months, I don't know. So that means the more evidence and the more ways of knowledge and ways of approaching you have, the stronger the knowledge will remain in your heart. Are you following? So now, alhamdulillah, we know that actually the utterance increase, conviction increases, and so the action increases. The one who prays only five prayers is his iman like one who prays the five prayers and the nafil prayers and tahajjud prayers. What do you think? The same or different? Different. That's why you, every Muslim, he feels that in Ramadan, his iman increased because his salawat, his actions are increased. Now here, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to advise myself and yourself. We have to work hard on our iman. You have to make the tongue busy with the dhikr, with the istighfar. So that's how your iman will, mashallah, be. You'll feel the sweetness because, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a real sweetness for the iman. Sweetness in the real sense. Insha'Allah, we are going to give towards the end examples for those people who had that sweetness in their iman. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant that sweetness to us. Ameen. So there is a real sweetness. But this sweetness will not come if this iman is very weak. So your actions should increase. Not only you pray the five prayers, because many Muslims... They say, okay, it is, it's, the only fard is the five prayers. And that's it. And they don't pray nafil, the 12 rak'ah where Prophet Muhammad said, he who maintains praying 12 rak'ah in the day and the night, Allah will build for him a palace, house in the Jannah. So, you don't want that house in the Jannah? If you want that house in the Jannah, never miss the 12 rak'ah. Two before Fajr and four before and two after the Dhuhr, and two after the Maghrib, and two after Isha. So that's how you will increase your Iman, insha'Allah. So now, how can we strengthen our Iman? How to reinforce this Iman, and make it strong in our hearts? Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the learning we have to learn our deen nowadays among the muslims there is something called religious illiteracy religious illiteracy the people muslims are illiterate about their deen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Yasir Fazaga wishing you and your family a blessed Eid al Adha. Do you think that this book can have any relevance to modern science? Doesn't it stand 
بحسها بدفعي شور الدز Let me discuss with you the scientific precision of the glorious Quran. Join Dr. Zaghloul An-Najjar in Islam and Science every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 7 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Christian family. Allah. I love the deen, I love the community. There was no relationship between what the preacher was saying and what was in the Bible. PhD holder in Christian theology to come and teach, but the book that he was using was the writings of Imam Ghazali. Acquired knowledge cannot reach an absolute fact. If you are a Muslim, you have to be equipped first with knowledge of your deen. My desire is to see the whole world become Muslim. Alhamdulillah, our Islam is a way of life. A journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. Watch Islamic Quotient next on Peace TV. How to reinforce this Iman, make it strong in our hearts. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the learning. We have to learn our deen. Nowadays among the Muslims, there is something called religious illiteracy. Religious illiteracy. The people, Muslims, are illiterate about their deen. Though there are PhD holders with the title doctor, but they don't know the dean. So it is high time for us to learn our dean. Without learning the Islam, without learning the dean, the Iman will become weak. Second thing, this book, the Quran, Allah revealed it, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah revealed this book for the Hidayah for us to contemplate, to ponder, to reflect. Not that we take this Quran and read it in the parrot fashion without knowing its meaning, no. Get a translation of the Quran in your mother tongue, tafsir, so you know when you are reading what you are reading. Because this book, the Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strengthens the Iman. And you should not deserve the Quran. Unfortunately, the Quran has been deserted in the life of Muslims. Not only deserted, it became an evil omen in some Muslim countries. I will not mention names. In some Muslim countries, if, for instance, you open the television and you see only Quran, you say, oh my God, who died? It is an evil omen because this time there should not be any Quran. There should be music and dance and all that. But now there is Quran, so there must be something wrong. Someone died. President, king. So that's why they are reading Quran. So it became an evil omen. This is the ummah of the Quran, subhanAllah. The third thing that will strengthen your iman is to see the greatness of Allah. Don't you see the greatness of Allah around you? Don't you see yourself? Don't you see this complex body? Don't you see this universe around you? The order, everything is in order. Galaxies and galaxies and galaxies and these celestial bodies are moving around. Everything is in order. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to reflect. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ they ponder and reflect upon the creation of Allah. Rabbana ma khala hadha Oh Allah, for sure you didn't create this 
just for nothing. No. There must be a purpose. As our scholars tell us, there are two books. The whole creation is one massive book. Read it. And the other book is the Quran. So there are two books. So read, the, see the creation around you. That calls you to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a matter of fact, it builds your iman. It builds your iman. Also, the dhikr. Dhikr. Dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters, is the most important thing. Dhikr to the heart, just like water to the plant. The plant without water, what will happen to it? Will die. The same thing, your heart. No dhikr, your heart will die. So always keep astaghfirullah. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, on the night of Mi'raj, he told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, wa akhbir ummatak, O Muhammad, this is a message from Ibrahim alayhi salam to us. Tell your ummah that Jannah is qi'an, is not cultivated yet. There are many parts of the Jannah not planted. Anna ghirasuha subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar. You want to plant trees in the Jannah? Say this, subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar. Then a tree will be planted for you in the Jannah. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he explained, he said, one tree in the Jannah the fastest horse riding the fastest horse will be running for 100 years and will not finish the shade of that tree. 100 years the horse is running in the shade of one tree and the trunks of the trees are made of gold. And this tree you can plant by subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar. Plant now. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allah So this is the dhikr, the sweetness of the dhikr. So keep your tongue rather than driving on the motorway and you are, mm, 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 you are singing. Huh? Don't you know that in Saudi Arabia, two cars collided into each other and the people they rushed to save them they found one reading the Quran, dying reading the Quran. The other one was singing. Which one you want? Because whatever your heart will come when you are dying on your tongue. If your heart is not filled with the dhikr and the reading the book of Allah, when you are dying, something else will come out. Dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters, and the benefits of dhikr are so many. So if you want to strengthen your iman, don't lose the dhikr at all. Also, we should not waste time. Time is life. One of the Salaf, his brother was telling him, wait for me, wait for me. He said, hold the sun for me. Can you hold the sun for me? No. The grandfather of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah used to tell his son that when I go to the toilet, my son, I don't want to waste that time. Please read loudly so I can hear the ilm while I am responding to the call of nature. So that time is not lost. Many of the scholars of hadith, they said to their wives, when you make my food, don't make it solid, make it liquid so I will just gulp it. So I don't have time to chew, to waste. What are we doing? Wasting time, hours and hours in front of the tele television. What will you ask Allah? What will you answer to Allah when He asks you? How did you spend your life watching television, watching cricket? That's the answer you are going to give to Allah. Time is your life, and He's going to ask about it. Subhana Rabbil Azim. Also, we should regret make. Nadam made tawbah, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, and nadam tawba. Regret is a repentance. Regret for what happened and say, inshallah, 
Inshallah, from now, my dear brothers and sisters, we make our niyyah. Oh Allah, help us from now on, inshallah, we'll not waste time. Inshallah, we will benefit, inshallah, from every single minute, inshallah. And I just conclude with one example. An example of those who tasted the iman in their hearts. Take the examples of the early Muslims. Yasser and Sumayyah. Those are the early martyrs. They became Muslims. And by the way, this is the beauty of Islam. You remember the hadith of Bukhari, the hadith of Herakl, Hercules? When Abu Sufyan, he asked Herakl, the Hercules, asked Abu Sufyan, who believe in him and who follows him? The poor and the needy and the destitute, the rich ones. What did he say? The poor. Why? They oppressed the, the slaves. They trod them. Those who are stepped upon. Why? Because they feel that there is justice. They feel that this deen is the true deen that equates between all human beings. So early Muslims, Yasser and Ammar, and they were experiencing torture. And Prophet Muhammad would just pass by them helpless. He couldn't do anything. The only thing Prophet Muhammad could do, Sabran ala Yasir, fa inna mawidukum al jannah. Oh, people of Yasir, be patient. I will meet you where? In the jannah. Another example, Suhaib, Rumi. Radiallahu anhu, when he became a Muslim and then he decided to make hijrah to Medina, what happened? The mushriks followed him. And they told him, listen, when you came to Mecca, you were very poor. And, now, and you made money in, this, in our town. And now you want to go with me? He said, no. The money is there. You want the money? Go and take it. I don't want it. But let me go to my beloved one, to my prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa And he left the money, and he reached Medina. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa when he saw him, he said, Rabi al bay'a Aba Yahya. The deal you made, oh, Suhaib, with Allah, is profitable. And one day he was sitting in Medina with the Sahaba, and they were discussing what happened to them in Mecca. And then he removed his garment, and he showed them his back, and it was completely white skin white skin he said what is this he said is this a skin disease he said no 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 I tell you what happened the mushriks in Mecca removed my clothes and they put me on charcoal hot charcoal without any piece of cloth the only thing that extinguished the fire the fat of my back the fat started melting so that's how. This is what happened. Bilal. They were dragging him in Mecca on the hot sand and dressed in armor, armor, metal. And he said, by Allah. And they were asking him, say something about our idols. He would only say, what? Ahadun? Ahad. Ahadun? Ahad. He said, by Allah, I was mixing the sweetness of Ahad on Ahad. So I feel the sweetness in my heart so that the pain, I didn't feel the pain because of the sweetness of Ahad on Ahad in my heart. Another example, Abdullah ibn Hudafa is one of the Sahaba who was arrested, captured as a prisoner along with many of the Muslims. And the king of the enemies, he wanted to convert him to the disbelief. And he failed miserably. He then he told him, I will give you my daughter. I'll get you married. And I'll give you half of my kingdom. He said, all this is rubbish. Then he started killing the Sahaba, his companions. 
And the way they killed the Sahaba, they would drop the Sahabi into massive pots full of boiling oil. And they would lower them into the pot by chains. The moment the body is immersed into the oil, the bones float on the surface. That's what happened to the Sahaba. Do you think this deen reached us easily with our sacrifices? No. Uh...